If you find yourself with a camera in your hand and you want to learn how to use it, please subscribe to this channel, like the videos, comment down below what you would like to learn more about. Hi, Photon subscribers. Today we are talking about finding your zone. We've talked about before the ability to find or make money in the photography world. Well, today we're going to be talking about finding your zone, but that's going to start with understanding just how wide photography really goes. How many industries are there within photography itself? Art is a world of its own, a lot of people have said, and I've heard quoted a lot of times before. But just how wide and what are the opportunities within photography? So let's get into that, but first I want you to be able to answer four questions and I want you to think real hard about it. These first four questions are, what is your focus? What do you enjoy most in photography? A follow-up question to that one would be our question number three. And I spaced it out because really they're not tied together, but some of these questions will help you verify and figure out just what your focus is or what do you enjoy most. So before we get to question three, question two is what are you great at accomplishing or what photos do you go to get that you are really good at getting? Some people are really great at getting people a smile, so they really tend well towards family portraiture or child port uh, photography, or perhaps it's that you get a really good response out of somebody and so you do really good with professional headshots. Those are some ideas. What are you really good at accomplishing and how do you get that result? Are you really good at it? Number three, what kind of images do you find most often on your memory card? Another way to ask the question is what images do you take most pictures of? Um, there's a certain style or a certain setup, a certain um, kind of photograph that you shoot most, just naturally. It's a tendency. It's something you maybe unsubconsciously gravitate towards. So the, the more of that style of photograph you find in your memory card, the more it's going to tell you, hey, that's what I like to shoot. And that may be what you do well. So that helps you kind of figure these things out. Last question. And it's almost a no-brainer, something you may have been thinking about for a long time. It's one of those obvious questions. What do I love to do? Because the, the, the statement often comes, do what you love to do and you won't work a day in your life. That's not exactly what the question is, but it does have a part bearing on it. Fourth question, what gets you excited? What allows you to relax and have fun while you do it? That's the last question I want you to, to answer as you think about what these... There's so many different areas of photography, um, ways to make money at photography specifically, that it's, it's almost an endless cycle of opportunity. Once you get really good at something and you start to, um, what they call scaling it up so that you spend less time doing something and you get more opportunities of doing that thing in a smaller time frame, then you're gonna be making more money, you're gonna be doing all sorts of other things, but that's another topic for another time. Getting down into the details of photography and the art world within photography, these are just some, these are not all, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say this is, is uh, an exclusive list, but these are some of the areas in which you can make money in photography, doing these specific styles of photography. There is stock photography. There's portraiture photography, and within portraiture, there are things such as professional headshots, family shots, infant shots, expectant shots, weddings. I mean, they, they also include weddings as other, um, it's, it's really an industry of itself, but it is, it does incorporate portraiture. So it's, it's a different look and feel. It's a different setup if you're shooting portraiture in studio versus at an event. So I, I see why they include it in a different industry, but we've only gotten to the first seventh of these. So I've got to hurry up. There are actor entertainment family portraits. Wedding is the next major industry they have here. But I do, again, with my experience in wedding photography, that's... Wedding photography falls under events and portraiture, somewhat in, in my opinion. Um, but as with a lot of arts, it's subject to somebody's opinion, right? So after event photography, there's product photography. There's architecture photography. 
you like to take pictures of buildings. You know good architects that want their buildings shown off in a portfolio that they don't just want digital renderings of, they want a photograph of. That's another one. There's aerial photography. Uh, there's quite a number of individuals that used to go up with film cameras in airplanes and before they would take off with the pilot's permission, they would remove a door from a plane and they would lean out the plane tethered to the airframe and they would take pictures of land plots down below. Then they would come to the landowners and do the hard cold, uh, the cold sale or the cold call of a sale and uh, try and sell that image to the, the landowner. And it, they are unique and intriguing enough that a lot of landowners did, they bought the, the aerial photograph, but it's actually a specific industry of photography. There is cinematic stills. So uh, that's a hard industry to break into, but if you know a movie producer and they hire in a still photographer to take those action shots of the films that are used on uh, movie posters and other things, that actually is something that requires you to have an understanding of the scenes that the producer wants uh, portrayed, but kind of compiling all that into one composite. But if you're uh, good enough and you actually have access to the, the, um, the movie actors, then you could compile that in one image and, and have a lot less to do, but it will require a lot more equipment on your part. It's usually that's hired within the production studio, but um, it is an option. If you, if you know anybody that has connections in, in uh, cinemagraphic uh, studios, then, then go for it. Uh, other industries within photography are fashion, wildlife, landscape, oceanic photography that requires a lot of expensive equipment but if you've got the the drive for it and you have the opportunity to buy that equipment then go for it uh, photographs that focus on stars the the portraiture of astronomy that's a very interesting um, I have a part of that uh, very industry in my portfolio on my website and I call it stellar work um, okay bad pun but there's all sorts of photographs to go into social media that could be a sub part of stock, but it doesn't have to be either. A lot of the Pinterest and TikTok creators or influencers do a lot of their own photography and it's specifically designed for social media. And it has a specific point that not a lot of words have to be included with it, that they show the photograph and it is a visual hook. It gets people into looking at their product or their website or their videos and it draws a crowd in. It's a, uh, it's a very niched market. There is a lot of um, need for imaged students of schools. So there's school photography, school portraiture really is what it is. But that is an industry that I know individuals have made a career of. They've, they've got contracts with several cities or even individual private schools to come get the students pictures. And it's just, it's, one to two full weeks time because it happens just before graduation or, or a period before graduation. And it can take a lot of time. The younger you go, the harder it can be. So school portraits can be a difficult one. Some of the others that are a little bit harder because of the drama involved, like with fashion or cinema, uh, cinematic still, uh, photojournalism, it's a higher pressure industry, but uh, then there's also the, you like the thrill of, of finding and seeking something. There's the paparazzi as well. There's finding those images. It's more photojournalism, but it's, it's contract photographers that sell their images to the, um, lifestyle magazines and, and sell their portraits of these individuals that who knew where they were for a while. And now they find them coming out of a spa or, or some, um, some place that they weren't expected to be because somebody got a, a tip that so-and-so would be somewhere at a specific location. Uh, real estate photography. It can be a little bit hard to break into, but if you have enough real estate experience from uh, real estate agents that you know that are hiring you to take images of the listings that they have, real estate is a pretty good industry to get into. There's, there's several companies that you're gonna have to compete with if they operate in your area. So be ready to compete with quality 
and quantity and be able to price yourself so that you're not pricing yourself too low in the market to not be able to recoup your time or the images you're selling for the amount of uh, fuel that you're using to drive and, and get your equipment around. Uh, last six or seven here are pet photography, print photography, sports photography, food photography, that's kind of an interesting niche itself, travel photography, and street photography. That took me almost 10 minutes to do. So all of these have specific needs and unique requirements for the equipment being used. But beware, there is a lot of opportunity out here in photography. And just because you're going into photography and you have a friend or somebody else that you know of that's in photography, maybe they're even shooting the same stuff. If you shoot street photography and you see somebody else that's shooting street photography, they may be marketing their stuff to a completely different group of individuals than you are. So they're really not competition. They're just taking images of the same thing for a different group that has the same interest. So I hope that helps. Don't feel like you're being cut out of what opportunity is there. It's not a pie that's cut into so many pieces. And once those pieces of the pie are gone, there's no more opportunity. It's not true. I, I subscribe to the belief that there is endless opportunity. So if you find yourself with a camera in your hand and you want to learn how to use it, please subscribe to this channel. Like the videos. Comment down below what you would like to learn more about. We will create this content for you. And uh, our vision is to help our viewers, subscribers, and get the content out to them as soon as we can through this channel as we have a grasp of it and be able to consolidate the experience I have in photography. But uh, also uh, to begin forming and shaping things that will benefit you in your, your uh, desire to continue on your journey of photography, whether that's business uh, or if it's simply a hobby. We want to be able to benefit you, and that's what we're working towards. And we're going to be doing some, some things in the future that I think you're going to be really excited about. We are really excited as we are creating those things and working on getting everything lined up so that when we actually make the announcement, it's, it's some, a sure thing. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like the videos, and leave a comment below. Thank you so much. God bless.